Hello guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel, JBest TV. On today's video, we bring you the story of Nigeria's most notorious armed robber in the 80s, who was dreaded by the police as he was said to have killed and robbed massively at will, thereby becoming a national threat. We're going to be talking about Lawrence Anini. He was one of Nigeria's most notorious armed robbers who held sway in the old Bendel state, currently known as Edo and Delta states. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do well to subscribe and also don't forget to click on the notification bell icon so you get notified on our new videos. Let's get into the video. Lawrence Anini was said to have reigned in the 80s and his reign was so bloody that he was even discussed at the State Security Council meeting. Anini was later executed on March 29, 1987 after his conviction by a Benin High Court for armed robbery. Anini was born in 1960 in a village about 20 miles from Benin City, present-day Edo State, dreadfully called the Law or Ovigo. He migrated to Benin at an early age, learned to drive and became a skilled taxi driver. He became known in Benin motor parks as a man who could control the varied competing interests among motor park touts and operators. He later delved into the criminal business in the city and soon became a driver and transporter for gangs, criminal godfathers and thieves. Later on, he decided to create his own gang, which included Monde Osungbo, Ofege and others and they started out as car hijackers, bus robbers, and bank thieves. Gradually, he extended his criminal acts to other towns and cities far north and east of Benin. The complexity of the police is believed to have triggered Anini's reign of terror in 1986. In early 1986, two members of his gang were tried and prosecuted against an earlier under the table agreement with the police to destroy evidence against the gang members. The incident and the Anini's view of police betrayal is believed to have spurred retaliation by Anini. In August 1986, a fatal bank robbery linked to Anini was reported in which a police officer and others were killed. That same month, two officers on duty were shot at a barricade while trying to stop Anini's car during a span of three months. He was known to have killed nine police officers. In an operation in August 1986, the Anini team struck at First Bank, Sabungida Ora, where they carted away 2,000 Naira. But although the money stolen was seen as chicken feed, they left the scene with a trail of blood. Many persons were killed on that day. On September 6, that same year, the Anini gang snatched a Pijot's 504 car from Albert Otoi. The driver of an assistant inspector general of police, Christopher Omegben. In snatching the car, they killed the driver and went to hide his corpse somewhere. It was not until three months later that the skeleton of the driver was spotted 16 kilometers away from Benin, along the Benin Agbo Highway. A day after this attack, Anini operated in a Passat car believed to have been stolen also effected the snatching of another Peugeot 504 car near the former Fedico office in Benin. Two days after, the Anini men killed two police officers in Oriolong local government area of the state. Still in that month, three different robbery attacks, all pointing to Anini's involvement, took place. A day after the operation, Anini, also known as the law, turned to a father Christmas as he threw words of cards on the ground for free pick by market women and women at a village near Benin. Anini thus spearheaded a four-month reign of terror between August and December 1986. Anini also reportedly wrote numerous letters to media houses using political tones of Robin Hood-like words to describe his criminal acts. Worried by the seeming elusiveness of Anini and his gang members, the then military president, General Ibrahim Babangida, ordered a massive manhunt for the kingpin and his fellow robbers. 
The police thus went after them, combing every part of Bendel State where they were reportedly operating and living. The whole nation was gripped with fear of the robbers and their daredevil exploits. However, police manhunts failed to stop the activities. The more they were hunted, the more intensified their activities became. Some of the locals in the area even began to tell stories of their invisibility and for a while it felt like they were never going to be caught. However, at the conclusion of a meeting of the Armed Forces Ruling Council in October 1986, General Babangida turned to the Inspector General of Police, Itam Iyang, and asked, My friend, where is Anini? At about this time, Nigerian newspapers and journals were also publishing various reports and editorials on the Anini Challenge, the Anini Saga, the Anini Factor. Lawrence Anini, the man, the myth. Anini, Jack the Ripper. And Lawrence Anini, a Robin Hood in Bendel. The Guardian asks emphatically in one of its reports, Will they ever find Anini the law? Finally, it took the courage of Superintendent of Police Kayode to bring the Anini reign of terror to an end. On December 3, 1986, Kayode caught Anini at number 26 Onyeusa Street, opposite Iguodala Primary School, Bini City, in a company with six women. Acting on a tip off from the locals, the police man went straight to the houses where Anini was hiding and apprehended him with very little resistance. Coyote led a crack 10-man team to the house, knocked on the door of the room, and Anini himself, clad in underpants, opened the door. Where is Anini? The police officer quickly inquired. Dazed as he was caught off guard and having no escape route, Anini all the same tried to be smart. Oh, Anini. Anini is under the bed in the inner room. As he said it, he made some moves to walk past Kayode and his team. In the process, he shoved and had booted the police officer, but it was an exercise in futility. Kayode promptly reached for his gun, stepped hard on Anini's right toes, and shot at his left ankle. Anini surged forward, but the policeman took hold of him and put him in a sitting position. They then pumped more bullets into his short leg and almost severed the ankle from his entire leg. Already anguished by an excruciating pain, the policeman asked him, Are you Anini? And he replied, My brother, I won't deceive you. I won't tell you lie. I am Anini. While in the police net, Anini, who had poor command of English and could only communicate in Pidgin, made a whole lot of revelations. He disclosed, for instance, that Osombo, who had been arrested earlier, was his deputy, saying that Osombo actually shot and wounded the former police boss of the state. Anini was shot in the leg and was transferred to a military hospital and had one of his legs amputated. When Anini's hideout was searched, police recovered assorted charms, including the one he usually wore around his waist during operations. It was instructive that after Anini was captured and dispossessed of his charms, the man who terrorized the whole state and who was supposed to be fearless suddenly became remorseful. He began making confessions, and this was against public expectation of a daredevil hoodlum who would remain deviant to the very end. Shortly after the arrest of Anini and Co, the daredevil robbers began to squeal, revealing the roles played by the key police officers and men in, the, in aiding the and abating of criminals in Bendel State and the entire country. Anini particularly revealed that George Iyamu, who was the most senior police officer shielding the robbers, would reveal secrets to them and then give them logistic support such as arms, to carry out robbery operations. Due to the amputation of his leg, Anini was confined to a wheelchair throughout his trial. He was sentenced to death by Justice James Omo Agege and executed on March 29, 1987. What a sad end to Anini. So guys, that is the end of our video today on Lawrence Anini. Please do well to subscribe. Don't forget to drop your thoughts in the comment section and don't forget to like this video. See you in our next video, guys.